Hi, it's Monica and let's talk about some new November releases that I read. So this will be some quick to the point reviews of two books including The Illuminaries by Susan Denard and The Banned Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson and a quick thanks to Nat Kelly for the review copies. First going into The Illuminaries by Susan Denard, this is a YA contemporary fantasy book and I rated it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. We're set in the town of Hemlock Falls where you can't really find this town on a map and your phone really doesn't have signal most of the time. There is an ancient order known as the Illuminaries who helped protect the world from the nightmares and monsters that come out of the forest near Hamlet Falls. Our main character, Winnie Wednesday, she wants to join the Illuminaries to become a hunter. But her family has a stain on their name because her father has been accused of being a traitor and for being a witch and performing witchcraft. Although Winnie really does want to help her town and defeating the nightmares, but she also wants to restore her family name and she can't really do that without the help of the resident bad boy in town, Jay, who helps her train and get through the hunter trial. So at first, I was very intrigued about the concept of living nightmares and there's a lot of lore and monster details of each unique nightmare that we encounter. I found that part of the book very interesting and also very unique but the execution of this book was very reminiscent of early 2010s where there was a huge YA paranormal boom and it did remind me of that time which I didn't hate but I still do remember liking a lot of paranormal YA fantasies from let's say like <laughs> 10 years ago now and I think I just wanted something new but I felt the Illuminaries didn't deliver in that aspect. And the Illuminaries follows the typical fantasy plot where there is an outsider being our main character, Winnie, and they want to be part of the inner crowd again, and they need to go through trials to get that recognition and, and prove their worth to whoever. And that's exactly what Winnie goes through. She goes through three trials to become a hunter and prove that she is worthy of holding that name of being a hunter as well as restoring her family name and I feel like that's such a common theme in YA fantasies and don't get me wrong like I love the typical fantasy plot of someone trying to work their way into like a secret society or like a group of people but I felt like there wasn't anything groundbreaking in the Illuminaries and I found my attention to be waning while I'm reading this book. The writing is also fantastic in this book but the I think it's third person present tense writing threw me off a bit and I think it's really up to my personal preference that I don't like books that are in that tense. Aside from that, I really enjoyed Winnie as a character. She's awkward, she's an outcast but she's quite intelligent and she has a way of making herself known to be important. There are hints of a romance with Winnie and Jay, but that wasn't really a central point of this book and I'm completely fine with that. Another thing that I really did not enjoy about this book was because it was quite predictable and not in the fun way because like the way I could actually exactly predict what would happen, it was quite like a PC like that would happen and compared to other predictable books that I have read and enjoyed, this one wasn't up to par and I felt like that there was like a spark missing for me. I did have really high expectations for this book because I really enjoyed the Witchland series by Susan Denard and I really loved the characters in the book and how the magic system in that book but then I don't know there was just something in the Illuminaries that fell flat for me. And onto my second book that I read which was The Banned Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson. And this one is a an adult contemporary book with a dash of romance and I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars. This was very lighthearted and a quick read for me. I was quite endeared to Maggie, our main character, because she's one to get distracted and she has this type of yearning within her that she doesn't know quite exactly yet of what it is that's driving her to be so distracted and we learn throughout this book what that exactly is. We follow her journey to find out her passion and she manages to do that through 
this bookshop that her best friend needs her to run while she is off to give birth and take care of her newborn and her other young child. I also love books about books and books about bookshops. So when I saw this book on NetGalley, I just had to request it and I got it. And it was a very unexpected but delightful surprise. We are set in a small town and this town is known for its literary success of Edward Bell. So all the townsfolk and all their small businesses in this town are revolved around Edward Bell and his novels. And our main character, Maggie Banks, is helping out her best friend, Rochelle, while she gives birth to her second child and helping her out with running her bookstore. But the thing about this bookstore is that it's limited and restricted to books only published before 1968. And that is due to Ralph Bell, who is the grandson, I believe, of Edward Bell, and he wants to retain his grandfather's legacy. Maggie herself doesn't really mind about this temporary gig because she is happy to leave her parents' home and also job hunt while she has something to do with her time and run a bookstore that she doesn't really have passion for. There are mentions of serious topics but we don't go super in depth in them because of Maggie, she's only really concerned about helping her best friend and making sure her best friend Rochelle has enough profit because her best friend is experiencing some financial constraints. Maggie doesn't want to screw that up for her best friend, but there is the topic of banned books, similar to what we find out in the title, and Maggie decides to sell some non-classic books to the townsfolk. I really enjoyed reading about Maggie's creative solutions to kind of hype up this underground book selling ring that she is creating and she also wants to stand up against the one man in town who is essentially running this town's entire economy. The thing about Maggie being a protagonist is she's very charismatic and you get to learn how she is finding her passion and she's also falling in love with books for the first time for the actual enjoyment and not just for school assignment. But Maggie isn't one without flaws, including with what I interpret as her being slightly manipulative towards her close friends and people that she has recently met in this town. However, those characters are very quick to forgive Maggie and although I think Maggie's intentions were good, but I think the way she went around some things in this book was a little bit questionable to me. And with people forgiving Maggie so quickly as they did, it made for a really quick ending and it did tie up everything nicely. Also, I label this book not as an adult romance book but just an adult contemporary because there's not much romance <laughs> except for the relationship that Maggie finds with Malcolm and the romance is decent enough but I didn't like them together. It's just that they have the steady sort of chemistry that you would find in what people would label as if you're reading a book or watching a TV show as the boring couple, but they do have a quite steady and stable relationship and they build up on their trust and they get over some hurdles. This was still quite the enjoyable read and full of light and comedic moments and highlights the small fights that people may go through. So I really did enjoy this one. This was quite a nice surprise to read in the beginning of this month. And overall, I did enjoy the band bookshop of Maggie Banks a lot better than I did the Illuminaries, but they are both different genres, so you can't really compare the two. And I'm finding that I am veering away from my fantasy, from what I enjoyed and loved reading from years ago. And I think that's okay because my reading tastes are changing and it's quite interesting to see how they do change. Anyways, I think that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you can give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!